These two lenses have the same focal length. However, one has an aperture of f1.8, while the other has an aperture of f1.4. For that difference in aperture, you usually have to pay a significantly higher price and carry a significantly heavier lens. I was curious as to whether that 0.4 difference in aperture would result in a different image, and even if it did, would it be significant enough to be worth it? As usual, my curiosity led to another video. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Bernard and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'll be comparing two different focal lengths at three different apertures to see what the difference is. Personally, I am a big fan of zoom lenses because they usually provide versatility, convenience and affordability. However, primes usually provide better image quality and allow you to shoot at wider apertures. Therefore, I am contemplating to start shooting more with primes. But before I do so, I need to make sure that the difference in image is significant enough to sacrifice the benefits I previously mentioned. To make this video possible, I reached out to my friends over at Camera Rental Center and they very kindly provided me with the lenses I need to make this comparison. Do note that this is not a sponsored video and my opinions are not influenced in any way. Without further ado, let's take a look at the sample shots. My first test is to compare the image from a zoom lens to a prime lens. As there are a variety of factors that will affect how the bokeh will look, here are a series of photos shot with the focal length 35mm in different scenarios. All these images are shot on the A7R 3 which has 42 megapixels. All photos are also color graded with the exact same settings, so any difference is probably due to how the lens renders the image. After analyzing all the photos, I do think that the bokeh of the prime lens is significantly better. When you crop in, it is also pretty obvious that the prime lens has the better image quality. The Sigma 24 to 70 is known to have outstanding image quality, so for the prime lens to cost lower and still beat it in terms of bokeh and image quality shows the benefit of a prime lens. After comparing images shot at 35mm, we now move on to the next focal length which is 85mm. Just like before, here is a series of photos shot in different situations, but all with the focal length of 85mm. Upon close analysis of the images, I noticed that although the bokeh of the prime lens was better, the image quality of the zoom lens was noticeably superior. However, this doesn't come as a surprise as the 70-200G master lens is 4 times more expensive than the prime lens. This goes to show that although f1.8 is guaranteed to give you significantly better bokeh over f2.8, image quality is not necessarily better just because you use primes. In conclusion, although primes in general will give you better image quality and allow you to shoot at wider apertures, when you compare lower end primes to high end zooms, the image quality of a zoom lens might still be better. However, if your priority is to get the best bokeh, primes are the way to go as the widest aperture for zooms are usually kept at f2.8 and the difference between f2.8 and f1.8 is very significant. The results for the first part of the video is more or less what I predicted. What I'm more interested in is to compare f1.4 and f1.8 to see which will give me the creamiest bokeh and if it will result in better image quality. And this time for the fun of it, I would like you to try guessing which is which before I reveal the answer to you. Let's begin. Here are a series of photos shot with the 35mm focal length but at different distance. Did you manage to correctly identify which image has the wider aperture? The results of this test was rather surprising to me. The price of the Zeiss lens is double than that of the f1.8 version, yet it does not seem to be superior in terms of image quality. In fact, in certain situations, I feel like the f1.8 lens has a sharper image. As for the bokeh, I do not think that there is any noticeable difference even after cropping it. I think this results has something to do with the f1.4 lens being one of the oldest lenses in Sony's lineup. The f1.8 is one of Sony's newer lenses and is probably equipped with better technology. In any case, between the two lenses, I would definitely go for the f1.8. Next, we will give the 85mm focal length a go. This is arguably the most popular focal length for portraiture photography. The results of this test are less surprising than the previous one. In my opinion, I think that there is a difference in bokeh when you take a closer look. However, as a reason on its own to spend extra for this lens, I do not think that it is worth it.
However, when it comes to image quality, the G Master lens definitely blows the competition away. The difference is significant when you crop in into the photos. In terms of my recommendation between these two lenses, I would say that you should go for the G Master. Especially if you're shooting with high megapixels and you plan to crop in or print out your photos in large sizes. If you do not have the budget for the f1.4 version, the f1.8 is still a decent lens and you can probably get away with image quality concerns if you are posting on social media platforms or if you are shooting video. From these rounds of tests, I have come to a conclusion. Moving forward, I would like to shoot more with primes if the situation allows. However, I do think that my zooms held up pretty well and I will not be swapping them out for primes entirely. The biggest takeaway for me was finding out that the difference in bokeh between the f1.8 and the f1.4 was not that significant. However, image quality between the two lenses might differ quite significantly and the expensive lens does not necessarily have the better image quality. I would like to clarify that I know that only comparing images shot with the widest aperture of each lens may not be a very thorough image sharpness test, but I am operating under the assumption that when you buy a lens with a wide aperture, you would probably want to shoot at its widest. My suggestion to you is that before you decide between two lenses, do consider renting them or borrowing them from a friend to give it a go because the hands-on experience will help you learn a lot about the lens. You can watch review videos online and they do help, but it's just not the same. Once again, I would like to give a shout out to Camera Rental Center for setting me up and do check them out if you need a place to rent any gear. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. That's all for today, it's a wrap!